Did you see that? Probably not. Here it is again, slowed way down by high speed camera. It's a fruit fly getting away. And that split second reaction might actually tell us something incredibly deep about our own brains. How they work and how they break. You probably clapped at these tiny flies in your kitchen. More times than not, you've probably missed. In the human versus fly competition, the fly often evades the fly swatter. This is Gwyneth Card. She's a fruit fly brain interrogator. Card is obsessed with how fruit flies cheat death by your hand or predator attack. She works here, Janalia Research Campus, just west of Washington, D.C. So why start with a fly? If you wanted to uh, talk to each of our brain cells in our brains, you'd have to go around and interview a population the size of 12 Earths. So that's a lot of people to talk to. Whereas if you want to interview um, each brain cell in the fly's brain, you only need to talk to the population of Anchorage, Alaska. Ours is big, theirs is tiny. But really, they're made of the same stuff. The parts that make up fly brains are very similar to the parts that make up our brains. And how those parts connect to each other are very similar in fly brains and in human brains. That similarity means we share some very fundamental behaviors. If you see something coming at you really rapidly, your body has innate reactions to tense up, to maybe crouch down, to duck. And these are exactly the same reactions that a fly does. So an additional reaction that the fly adds is actually jumping off the ground and initiating flight. But that's very similar to us, say, running away from something scary. Fight or flight. You've probably heard of that. Picard is trying to figure out exactly what brain circuits make the actual flight part happen in the fly. So we think that in the fly, we're going to be able to uh, interrogate all of those parts, all of the different neurons in the fly brain, and see how they assemble together in networks and circuits, and then extract from that principles that will apply to how networks and circuits in our own brains work. And fly brains are much easier to work on than ours. So in the fly, we can modulate its genetics in order to target individual brain neurons, to turn them on, to turn them off, to listen to the activity in those neurons when the fly is doing a particular behavior. And from that, we can piece together um, the role that individual brain cells are playing in the fly's behavior. Her lab also developed something called the fly pes. The inspiration was, of course, from the candy dispenser. It dispenses flies one at a time, kind of like little candies. They get funneled into a little tunnel that's one fly wide, and when they pass a gate, we close the gate behind them very quickly, um, isolating a single fly that then walks up and stands on a little platform. Now that fly standing on that platform is now in the middle of a very special domed IMAX for flies that we've invented. This contraption we use to play um, predator-like looming stimuli to the fly, and so what I mean by that is that we have a dark circle that expands rapidly, but we've carefully measured so that the rate at which that circle expands matches the rate at which a damselfly attacking the fly would be approaching it. And the fly sees these dark expanding circles and they display some kind of reaction. And that's the reaction that we then automatically capture with high-speed videos recording at 6,000 frames per second. With the fly pes, she's able to test the reactions of a lot of flies as she scares them into flight. She figures that she's scared tens of thousands of fruit flies over the last few years. And in doing so, her lab is beginning to understand the complex brain circuits that help flies evade your swatter. So why should we humans care? Understanding working circuits in a simpler brain could give us clues about the same ones in our own. That especially matters when they break. 100 million Americans have some kind of neurological disease, you know, ranging from um, devastating diseases such as Alzheimer's um, to epilepsy to severe migraines. Um, these are all issues that arise when some part of our, our brain processing system goes wrong. And understanding how the brain breaks or what goes wrong is going to be important to treating those diseases. We think that by using flies to understand the specifics of how these brain computations and pathways work, 
down the road that will give us insight to understand the mechanisms of how things are going wrong in some of these diseases that will eventually be able to lead to treatments.